on simulation design tools. Um, just to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way, can someone please type into the message box to just make sure that the audio is working okay? And just let me know. The message, our message box is on the bottom of the control panel. So if someone could put it into the messages. Yep, brilliant. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first of all, your feedback is greatly appreciated for all of these webcasts. So I do appreciate it um, when we do send out a questionnaire or a request for feedback. If guys can let us know what we can do better, potentially, or what they'd like to see in the next webcasts. Um, if we get suggestions for particular things, we'll, we'll cater to the uh, listeners' needs, I guess. Okay, so the agenda for today's webcast is, first of all, we will review why simulation is beneficial. We'll review simulation, the two different users, mainly designers and analysts or engineers. And then we'll give a, a pretty quick overview of a, a good few of the simulation tools that are available from Autodesk. We'll look at the FEA and the dynamic simulation tools that are inside an Autodesk Inventor Professional. We'll look at Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, which is more um, a, a more detailed finite element analysis package. And then we'll look at Autodesk Simulation Computational Fluid Dynamics. So a flow analysis program. And then we'll have some time for questions and answers at the end. And I guess just to introduce myself to new listeners, because uh, since companies joined up in A2K is relatively new. My name is Niall Smith. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. Um, my experience includes working in the petrochemical industry, the biomedical industry, working for the Department of Defense and various specialist vehicle contracts. And I've been using Inventor and FEA on or off for nearly 10 years now. Okay, so let's first of all talk about very briefly why you'd want to use simulation. So simulation can be used to predict product performance, to optimize your design. So if you need to make it as light as possible, as strong as possible, and so on. You can also validate your product. So once you have your design complete, you want to make sure that it complies with certain performance standards. A key thing from a cost point of view is that it will reduce your need for physical prototypes. You, you can guarantee that if you're using digital prototyping, you're using 3D modeling, you're using simulation, dynamic simulation, CFD, and so on, by the time you get to build your first prototype, it'll be a lot more accurate and a lot closer to the mark of where you actually want to be. So it also accelerates product development because you don't need to wait for manual testing. So for example, if you're building a component that needs to be fatigue tested or cycle tested, it can take days and weeks and even months to set up cycle testing correctly and to perform it and so on. Whereas using FEA, you can cut down that timeline to a fraction of the time. So it'll accelerate your time to market with products. So the different types of simulation that we're going to look at today, we'll look at dynamic simulation in Inventor. So you'd use dynamic simulation for sizing springs, sizing hydraulic cylinders. We'll look at finite element analysis, both in Inventor from a designer point of view, where you're looking to just do a quick stress analysis check. And we'll also look at it from the analyst point of view, where you want to get into more detail types of finite element analysis. So then we'll look at computational fluid dynamics and we'll look at some examples and what you can do in Autodesk Simulation CFD. The types of analysis that we can do in simulation mechanical, just to give a kind of a brief introduction to the, the types of simulation that can go on with um, simulation mechanical. They're nonlinear types of analysis, so you can do drop testing, shock loading, vibration, fatigue. You can do a little bit of multi-physics analysis because you can couple thermal and structural analysis. And you can also do mechanism studies. So we'll see a couple of examples today of nonlinear type analysis. We'll look at a little bit of drop testing. Um, we'll look at a fatigue analysis. 
I would also look at a, a critical buckling modes analysis. So some stuff that, again, they're more detailed and probably tailored towards the engineer or the analyst when they want to certify uh, a product or a structure. So the types of analysis that you would do with CFD, when I say CFD, it's basically a fluid flow analysis. And fluid flow analysis, they, involve, they can involve heat transfer analysis. And it allows you to perform accurate simulations of turbulent incompressible flows and so on. So you can also do time varying types analysis. And you can do scalar mixing of two fluids. And if you're doing pump design, you can take into account cavitation. So I'm not going to spend too long looking at the slides because I'm a firm believer in it's a lot easier to show people what it does as opposed to talk about it. So again, some of the other stuff you can do in CFD are linear uh, motion, angular motion. And we look at an example where we'll use linear motion and different types of uh, motion for flow analysis. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over, first of all, into the products. And we'll first of all look at Inventor. So Inventor typically would be used from a, a designer point of view. So it's, it's very good to get kind of alignment or congruency and get all the information from one model. And that's, that's where really Autodesk excels. Because you can basically create your model for design and then use that in a finite element analysis or a CFD analysis or more advanced FEA analysis. So the key thing with other packages is that you perhaps might have to design it in one package and then you have to create another finite element model, which can be cumbersome and waste a lot of time. Whereas here you're kind of getting more alignment and more value out of your, your, your digital prototype. So the first part we'll look at is going to be trailer. So the idea here is that it's a double acting ramp with two hydraulic cylinders on it. And the goal of the analysis is both to find out what the force is going through those hydraulic rams are so we can size and order the cylinders correctly. We could also take the forces that are perhaps going into the mounting lugs due to an inertial analysis or due to inertial loads and import them into the FEA environment and then carry out a stress analysis from our actual motion loads analysis. So it's very flexible. It's very useful. And what I'll do is I'll go into the Environments tab. And on the Environments tab, you can go into Dynamic Simulation. And that brings up our Dynamic Simulation tools. So when we are in the Dynamic Simulation environment, you'll see it in a second that I'm um, We've got the simulation player available to us. So what we can do is we can basically animate this assembly. But it's more than an actual animation, because it's taking into account the physics and the actual forces and loads and gravity and motion and inertia that we've inputted into the model. So when I press play on the simulation player, What's going to happen is the ramp is going to move through its range of motion. And this model has been set up already because with a webcast, we don't have a whole lot of time. So for, to get the most value out of this hour, I have, a, I have a lot of the analysis is already set up. So what's happening here is the ramp will move into the upper position. And then it'll start to let lever down as the second hydraulic ram comes into action. <coughs> So as that happens, as I said, it's not just an actual animation. We want to get engineering results of this. So we can go to, once the simulation has finished playing, we can go to the results or the output grapher, which is up towards the top left-hand side. And 
the output grapher will actually allow us to look at forces. hydraulic ran and then we can make sure that as we size our hydraulic cylinder the sizing hydraulic cylinders and people often tend to over engineer them but using this type of software you can get it more accurately uh, specified and you can also as I said you can export any of these loads at a particular time step into the finite design checks. Other properties you can look at from dynamic simulation are when we look at the actual curve properties. It gives you the maximum, the minimum, the average, the median, the standard deviation, and then the amplitude. And what's good about these results is actually export Okay, so, so you can really define what types of loads are going through a joint or a cylinder at a particular point in time. So I just load a load of that. And the next thing from inventor point of view again is I'll close down the existing assembly we've got open. And we'll look at another example. This example we're going to look at is going to be an optimization example. So from a design point of view, you often are not sure what, what kind of configuration Why does it need. So and oftentimes you actually want to optimize a part in terms of weight. So if it's going on a vehicle, you need to make it as strong as possible and also as light as possible. So I will move over towards the finite element analysis module inside an inventor. So when we switch over, we're going to look at a very simple tool. And let's say the scenario is that um, we need to make this part from with certain design constraints. Perhaps our maximum, our yield strength of the material is 250. We need to work and design this part with a safety factor of two. And key things to note are the mass and the maximum displacement. But we've also got different got um, a part and Thicknesses available to us are 12 mil, 16 mil, 20 mil. And we also want to find out whether we need to put a gusset in place. So you can see there that there's actually a rib in place in this part. When you zoom in, you can actually see it clearly. And all these questions, all these what-if scenarios are being asked to us as designers. So what we can do is instead of having to run multiple analyses, we can set up a parametric study, an optimization study. We can tell an inventor that we want to change the thicknesses from 12 mil to 16 mil and to 20 mil. We also want to turn on and off the um, the rib to see if we actually need it or not. And what you can see in the bottom part of the screen, the, the first half of the window pane is our design constraints. So we're telling inventor we need to look at our max von Mises. Our constraint type is an upper limit of 250 with a safety factor of 2. And you can see the next column over is our result value. And at the moment, the result value is in red because it hasn't met our design criteria of um, a safety factor of 2. So if the yield strength is 250, our maximum allowable stress would be And as we change the slider bars on the bottom part of the screen, the thicknesses will update in the graphic. 
basic window, and the results will also update. So it's with the rib on or with the rib off. So as the graphics update, you'll see the rib actually disappears. And what's left is just a shaded outline of the actual model before that. And each of the results are changing for each particular design scenario. So the question is, if we want to minimize we want to find the, the configuration that gives us our minimum mass. What we can do is we can look at our mass row, and we can select it to minimal or minimize. And it gives us the stress results, and it gives us the actual configuration that minimizes the mass. So you can see there's a little tick box beside the minimum mass for this configuration when it's 16 mil tick and doesn't have the ribbon place. So parametric studies and optimization analysis is they're very useful for what-if scenarios. It allows you vary the thicknesses. And instead of having to copy multiple simulations, you can run 10 or 20 different design scenarios in one simulation. So it's a really useful tool inside an inventor. And when we're looking at this analysis, we can see that the actual mesh is quite coarse. But we have got a full range of mesh tools inside an inventor as well for local mesh control and changing the average element size, the minimum element size, and so on. So you've got all the, FEA, the standard FEA tools that you would expect inside an in inventor professional FEA module. I want to show everyone is inside an inventor as well as having a solid at the elements that we used in that parametric analysis is what's going to be a, a signpost that we're going to look at. And the signpost is made up of long, thin components. So long, slender components, they weren't the use of a, a shell element. So when I zoom in, when we bring it up, once we bring it into the FEA environment, and I zoom in, so when I go mesh view, it's actually a 2D mesh. And this is very, very useful, because with long, slender objects, you solid element. So when we go into the results here, we can look at the von, von Mises, and it gives us the results. But you can see here the stress U. When we change it to actual, you can see there isn't actually a whole lot of deformation. And the reason that you would potentially look at the actual, or sorry, the adjust, or going to deform the structure if, if the loads were increased and tells you the way the forces are going through the model. So if we wanted to see uh, perhaps a better stress differentiation along the top of the sign, we can change our color. and change the actual stress range we see. And then we can see the areas in the model that are perhaps the most stressed. Okay, so we're looking at the structure of the signpost here, and we're the load of the sign acting in the downward direction. Okay, so that's a that's an excellent tool inside an inventor as well. So as well as a solid element and a shell element, inside an inventor we've also got a, a third element type, and the third element type is. If our structure or our part is made up using frame generator generator components with an environment called frame analysis. And the frame analysis environment is a is a brilliant tool because very quickly you can verify if your structure is going to withstand the loads that it's intended to withstand. You can see there that's 
what, is, what it has done is it has actually converted the the structure that was generated in Frame Generator into line elements. So if I go up to my frame analysis settings, for example, go to Beam Model, and I'll turn off the visibility of the existing model, you'll see that what remains is a finite element model that's built up solely of beams. And we can look at results. Again, same as the stress analysis environment. It gives us all our maximum stresses, maximum displacements, shear stresses, torsional stresses, and so on and so forth. We can exaggerate the actual view again, and then we can animate it as well. So by doing that, we can actually see the way that the structure is deforming and bending. We can quite clearly see where it's going to sag and where it's going to move. And we can check the maximum stresses in the beams and so on. And what's really useful as well is this particular analysis has been set up using aluminium. And we don't actually have to go back to Inventor to change the material. So within the frame analysis environment, we can compare a steel platform to results that if we built our platform from aluminium. So that's a, it's a very useful feature. And you can see that in the areas where our beams don't meet up due to external components, Inventor puts in rigid links between the beams. So it's, it's a very solid type of analysis. And the results you get inside an Inventor's FEA environment using beams, shells, or solid tetrahedrals, if the analysis is set up correctly, it will match any other finite element program. OK, so what we'll do is we'll finish out of Inventor. And we've had a very kind of quick whistle stop to tour of the actual tools inside an Inventor. And the last type of analysis that you can do in Inventor is what's called modal analysis. So we're not actually going to give a look at the modal analysis tools inside an Inventor, but it's good to mention them because what it does is it finds the first natural frequency of a structure, which can be quite critical for certain applications. So. If we switch over, so the design tools we looked at at the moment are, are really suitable for verification for designers. So if, a, if someone is drafting up and creating a design in an inventor, they can use all the inventor tools quite quickly, quite easily, and there isn't a whole lot of complicated buttons or figuring out what to do. And it allows you, as I said, check things like hydraulic cylinders, springs, allows you to check to see if you've got the right section size selected. You can do optimization studies, which are brilliant for what-if scenarios and things like that. But let's say you reach the limits of Inventor and you want to look at more um, complicated designs and you want to do things like perhaps a fatigue study. So then you go into Inventor, or sorry, Autodesk Mechanical Simulation. the stress analysis environment inside of Simulation Mechanical. And the program I'm working on at the moment is Simulation Mechanical 360. What it is is I can set up my finite element analysis on my desktop. And then when I go to solve it, it uploads it to the cloud. So it's not taking up computer resources. But more about that towards the end of the presentation as well. So when we're inside in Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, you can see that we can look at our stress analysis results, except this time we have the shaded with mesh view. And one thing you'll notice, and it's worth noting, is that in Inventor, you use a triangular shape element in your mesh, what's called quadrilateral. So quadrilateral is like a square shaped element. And the advantage of this is that you need less elements of these type of elements to solve a solution. And it also means that using quadrilateral and tetrahedral, which is basically square and triangular, means that you can use stress singularities are basically hot spots in the model. So it's a bit more of a stable element. So that's an advantage of going to simulation mechanical. Another thing you can do is you can carry out analyses like fatigue analysis quite easily. 
And Stig analysis is are brilliant because um, it allows you check your model and your product in another failure mode. So forth it can break without actually ever reaching yield strength. So we've got a fatigue calculator in here and we can pick our and if you're not sure what type of fatigue to pick, you can basically hover over the type of analysis here and it gives you a little tool tip. So stress based fatigue for high cycle fatigue problems, whereas strain based fatigue is for low cycle fatigue problems. So we're going to use strain based fatigue for this example. I'm going to go next. Then we can load in our material into the calculator. So we can say perhaps our material is going to be steel quenched, tempered, and we've got a, a wide range of steels to pick from. But if you do want to load in your own material library, you can do that as well. So we go next, and it gives us stress concentration factors, which are important for fatigue analysis, but it also gives us surface finish. And there's a nice little feature in here, if you don't know your surface finish concentration factors, which I don't, you can actually select the type of surface finish in here. So I'm going to say our link is actually a polished material, and I can say OK. And the next part we can move on to then is our load curve. So again, you can either define your load curve as you like, using time and multipliers, or you can actually open up one of the ones that are predefined. So the predefined ones come with the software, and I can define my fatigue to be a simple reversal magnitude, so a sawtooth type load curve, I can say OK. And then I can move on to the next dialog box, which is giving me the number of cycles or the desired life of the product that I need to work with. So I'm going to say 10 million, which I think is infinite life. Then we'll go next again, and it's basically a little traffic light symbol where I can say green for go. And it takes a couple of seconds to calculate it out, not too long. And it gives you a summary, and it gives you the different criteria here, basically the Morrow and the Smith-Watson criteria. So depending which one you're working with, the, uh, this, the Morrow, I think, is more conservative. So you can see here that your desires are designed based on the parameters we've listed as safe, and it gives us a predicted number of cycles to failure. Okay. So that's pretty good. If there was an issue with it, we could go back and we could change some of our parameters. Perhaps we could try different surface finishes and so on. And if we want to actually see where our stress, our fatigue analysis, our fatigue stresses are going to appear, we can go back to our results, our, our results contour tab, and we can look at fatigue results based on strain. And we can look at the log 10 life cycles. And it gives us a nice visual display of where potentially that part would fail due to fatigue. So it's very visual and really easy to interpret. And you can see the actual the, the, the shape of the object that we were working with. So again, it's a, it's a fantastic tool. And it's, it's something that's considered nonlinear. And it's not in Inventor. It's on a standalone package called Autodesk Simulation Mechanical. So some of the other things that you can do in Autodesk Simulation Mechanical include large-scale deformation. So if your um, product is going to, if you want to see if your product will kind of collapse or buckle or crumple up, you can use Simulation Mechanical to figure it out. And again, it's, it's checking the reliability of your product and if it's going to be safe. So in this scenario, we've got a tank that's loaded up on the top, and it's a fixed constraint on the bottom. And we've got a little outlet here. And the, the objective is to figure out, will this outlet crumple, or will it collapse, under the actual load that's been placed on it. So when we switch over to our results, and again, I'll give a change the view maybe to the mesh, or shaded with mesh. So it'll give us an idea of what's happening. And we can see here that this actual analysis is transient, so it's based over time. So if we want to see how this load goes on and is acting, we can go back to the start where it's time step 0 of 20, and we can step through the 
time as the load is applied. And if we zoom in, we can see that the stresses and the actual model is starting to buckle under the applied load. So when I orbit it around, you can see that that hole in the tank is going to cause failure. So then we'd go back to the drawing board a little bit, maybe increase the thickness, change the length of it, reduce the size of the outlet, so on and so forth. And you can see that's large-scale deformation. So again, that would be considered a non-linear analysis. And just as I'm mentioning the types of analysis that are available in mechanical simulation, when I go back to my setup, you can actually see that you've got linear, non-linear, thermal, electrostatic, and you've got lots and lots of different types. So you can do modal analysis, you can do shock load analysis, we can do thermal analysis based on transient or steady state. And as well as that, we've got a whole lot more element types to work with. So when I right click here, you'll see the list of element types that we can work with. You've got spring elements, truss elements, and so on and so forth. So in Inventor, we've got three different element types, which are solid, shell, and beam. Whereas here, we have a lot more. And we can do a lot more stuff with that as well. <clears throat> so one of the good advantages of simulation mechanical as well is that there's a fantastic uh, link back to Inventor. So you can actually, in this, this model is a, is a poor example. What I'll do is I'll just reopen the previous one again because this model was made in a, a neutral file format. So just to make the point that I was about to make, we go back into our model that we looked at initially, our link fatigue, and we'll open that. And what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that there, you can actually link back into Inventor from Simulation Mechanical. So when I go to the Mesh tab here, you can see we can get out our Inventor parameters. So if I want to optimize my part, I don't actually need to go back into Inventor to change things. I can change my thickness, my hole diameters, all from inside Simulation Mechanical. And if I find out that I need to change my geometry, well, then I can simply export these parameters back into the part in Inventor, and my part is updated automatically. So there's a brilliant workflow between Simulation Mechanical and Inventor. But as well as that, when we go to Open, it also works with a huge range of different file types. So you can see it works with all this, the standard CAD, the standard CAD file types, as well as the standard finite element analysis types. Okay. So as well as having a great workflow with Inventor, you can access basically any type of model in here as well. So the next type of analysis that I want to look at in mechanical simulation is perhaps a 2D analysis. So maybe you want to quickly check a structure to see if it's safe from a buckling point of view. So again, buckling is a little bit like fatigue. It can actually, the structure can buckle without ever reaching the yield strength of the material from the compressive load. So I'll just find the analysis type that we want to look at. And as I said, this is a critical buckling modes analysis. So let's say we have a quite a large structure. And we've drawn it up in two-dimensional inside mechanical simulation. So if you don't have a model and you want to do a quick design check on something, you can basically recreate the geometry using 2D elements here. So when I go into the results view, and again what I'll do is I'll switch on the shaded with mesh just to give you a, a better visualization. And when I zoom in, you can actually see that the results have converted the 2D elements into 3D visualizations. And you can actually see what shape and which way the orientation is of these equal angle or L-shaped sections. So the design scenario here is we've got a load on top of our steel structure. And we want to check if this structure will buckle. Okay? And in our results contours, we've got different buckling modes. But the key buckling mode is the very first one. And you will see the results down here on the bottom left-hand side, that the load we have on this structure will cause buckling. because at 0.785 times the load we've on, that's the, the actual buckling multiplier, which means that it's 
the buckling multiplier is less than one, it means your structure is going to fail due to buckling. So if we analyze this from a stress point of view, our maximum stress might be below the yield stress, but the structure would still fail because it's too tall and too slender. Okay, so if your buckling mode perhaps was 1.95, that means you'd have to put 1.95 times the load on the top of the structure to induce buckling in the structure. So that's, again, considered a nonlinear analysis and a very nice feature and piece of functionality inside Nautilus Simulation Mechanical. So another type of analysis that you can do in Simulation Mechanical would be a drop test. So again, it's motion when you want to actually see the shock load on something. So let me just find this one again. So it's in the uh, this in a different folder, Simulation 360 webcast. So this is one that I've shown and set up and used in a different webcast. But again, it's, it's worth looking at just to show the range of tools that you have available to you within Auto, the Autodesk products. So in this, in this analysis, what we want to do is we want to actually drop a part which in this case is like a little clasp. I'm going to drop it at set distance so that it impacts floor. I want to see what the, the stress is as that part impacts the ground. So this type of analysis, what we've done is we've basically done a kind of a stop-start analysis. We've, we've allowed the part to fall a certain distance with a, with a very large increment because we're not concerned about the stresses in the part as it's falling through the air. And then we've reduced the time step quite significantly just before impact. And that allows us to see the stresses at impact quite easily. So as I, again, this is a transient analysis. So as I step through the time steps, you can quite easily see the stress on impact as this part hits the ground. So you can do this for small parts. You can do it for big, large containers. Again, if you want to assess whether your part can withstand a shock load or a drop load and a drop test. So again, another fantastic tool that's inside in Simulation Mechanical. So we've given a, a very quick whistle-stop tour of the Simulation Mechanical products. And the next type of thing I'd like to look at is Simulation CFD. So if I switch over, I will give a, a look at what sort of CFD products, what the CFD products can actually do and what CFD offerings Autodesk give us. So this analysis, we've got a little check valve. And we want to be able to see and analyze how this poppet moves due to the flow. So it's a spring-loaded poppet. And this will spring back under the force of the flow. And we want to see the pressure that will actually cause it to move back. So we've specified things like a spring load acting on this poppet and a, an inlet flow and an outlet flow. So if we look at our boundary conditions, you can see we've put in a volume flow rate at the start and a pressure outlet at the back to allow the flow go through our valve. And we can analyze the flow quite easily then. So when we go to our results, we can say, let's look at our perhaps our planes. And what we're looking at is, we're looking at the static pressure in the actual plane, and we're looking at a velocity vector as well. So the velocity vector is the arrows. And again, this is a transient analysis, so I can step it through. And we can change the, the, the color bar again to suit us and to, to maybe define the pressures a little bit clearer. So as I said, as we're stepping through, you can quite easily see the pressure that causes that valve to operate. Other tools you've got in here are ISO surfaces. So if we switch to ISO surfaces, and perhaps we edit the ISO surface we've got, you can actually see the areas. And what I'll do is I'll just turn off the, go back to my planes, and let us and it will allow us to look at the ISO surfaces a little bit better. So I'll just edit that plane and 
turn it into an outline. And that should give us a better definition on our ISO surfaces. So, and what I'll do as well is I'll turn off the vectors on our plane again to let, just allow us to look at the ISO surfaces a little bit better. So an ISO surface basically tells you the region of a particular, so particular regions, what the flow is in that particular region. So for example, when I go to edit this ISO, what I can do is, oh, I'm in the planes mode again, so I'll just switch over to ISO surfaces, and I'll edit the ISO surface. We can see the actual areas by a visual display, so what the results are by visual display. And it shows us how the actual flow and the pressure increases in certain areas, where the maximum areas are, and how, la how large that pressure area is. So they've got some excellent review tools and visualization tools in here for flow analysis. And what's one of the best things inside in CFD, or simulation CFD, I should say, is the decision center. And I can just show you another example for where the decision center is used really well. So let's say we have different types of analysis. And we want to compare multiple analysis types. In this scenario, we've got the flow around a valve. So this is a valve in the, used in the automotive industry. What we can do is when we look at our results, we can look at our decision center. And we can quite easily compare results from different design scenarios. So let's say we want to vary our mesh set settings or inlet and our inlet and our outlet. What we can do is we can go to the view um, tab, split the screens, and we can compare different types of analysis quite easily. So you can see we've got a lot more mesh density on the right hand side, and perhaps we could have a different flow settings, and that allows us make make decisions quite quickly and easily. And um, the other thing is, there's actually a, a brilliant link up with simulation CFD and Inventor. You can quite easily do automation studies. So you can link up with iParts inside an Inventor. And you can run a whole host of, of CFD flow analysis in one hit. So that's a fantastic feature in inside in Simulation Mechanical. And even from mechanical parts, what we can do is we can go from the mechanical environment into the more the construction and the AEC market. And we can look at things like Exhibit Hall here, which is a, a tutorial online from the WikiHelp. And you can use the same types of analysis results for more a, a room type setting. So perhaps we wanted to analyze the air conditioning in a room for winter versus summer. And we wanted to look at different things such as how warm and how comfortable that person is going to be. We can capture snapshots for reports, and you can see how the flow and the temperatures vary, and the areas of high temperature and cold temperature. And also, we've got a predicted mean vote, which is basically a measure of how comfortable that person is sitting on the bench. And you can quite easily analyze the different scenarios as well. So there's some fantastic tools and visualization results. So um, I can see you guys as well, there's some questions just coming in. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll give a few minutes at the end for questions and answers, and I'll get to all the questions that are coming in. So if you want to put down the questions as you think of them, type them in, and I'll get to them at the end of the webcast. OK, so that's a, a very quick whistle stop tour of simulation products inside in the Autodesk design tools. So you've got Inventor, you've got mechanical simulation, and you've also got simulation CFD. And for guys who do mold flow and tooling analysis, there's also mold flow analysis, which we didn't get time to cover today. So if I flick back to our presentation, here we go. We can talk a little bit about how these simulation packages are packaged from a, how do you actually buy these. So for simulation mechanical and simulation CFD, you can buy the desktop version, or you can buy a cloud version, which is called simulation or Sim360. And in Sim360, you get the CFD package, 
you get simulation mechanical, and you get a, I'm not certain how many cloud credits, but you get, you get a, an, a, a useful amount of cloud credits to get started. And you basically use those cloud credits per solve. When you run out of those, then you can purchase more cloud credits and you use them per solve. The big advantage is that you don't need a really high spec machine to run SIM360 because you're basically only setting up the analysis on your laptop or your computer. Then you're uploading it to the cloud and it's servers in the cloud that solve the analysis and then put the analysis back onto your computer. Another big advantage of that is that it allows you to do concurrent engineering so you can submit multiple scenarios in one hit and you can get your results back and while that while the scenarios are being solved on the cloud, you can work on your computer. It doesn't it doesn't take your computer out of action at all, which is fantastic. So it really increases productivity. Another very good point about Sim360 is that it gives you a lot more flexibility. So basically if I buy a seat of Sim360, I can access my simulations both in the office at home on multiple computers. So it's actually usage-based access as opposed to license or as opposed to computer or user-based access. So you can submit your simulations for analysis at work, go home in the evening and check them if that's what you'd like to do. And it makes it very, very flexible. As well as myself from A2K Technologies who's really focused on simulation and simulation training and so on. When we come across problems or analysis that we need help with, Autodesk have a team dedicated to simulation. And they're called the Sim Squad. And they give 24-7 support as well because they're based in different areas in the globe. And these guys are all PhDs and top class and developers and so on and so forth. So we do have a good support network available to us. So that's, that was basically the webcast that I had planned on giving, and we're, we're doing well for time. So we've got about 10 minutes if we want to get some questions and answers going. So Jonathan has asked the question, does A2K provide training on Autodesk simulation mechanical software? Yes, we do. So we, do, we tend to focus more on a kind of customized training because some people would want to do purely structural. They won't be interested in thermal analysis. So then there's no need to look at thermal analysis for those. So we look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. We consult with the client or the user as in what sort of areas they want to look at. And then we focus on those areas and we tailor the course or what they need to know. We also give um, introduction training on CFD to get people started on SIM360 and so on. So, and as well as that, the inventor products are supported for training as well. So inventor FEA and Inventor Dynamic Simulation. So I'll leave a couple of minutes for some questions and answers for guys. So if anyone can think of any questions that came into their head throughout the presentation or they'd like to see something different or go back and look at something again, then we can. OK, I'll just give it another couple of seconds and if there are no more questions. OK, so thanks very much, guys, for your attention. Um, and I'll see you at the next webcast and probably see some of you in the meantime as well. Thanks again, and until next time, see ya.